was quite a tantrum. Clive, where is he? Well, yes. See him a few moments ago. <laughs> Clive, I, I don't know how to thank you. It's all right. We should find him a dry blanket, though. I wouldn't want the little monster catching a cold. There. He's finally asleep. The poor thing had a long day. That makes two of us. So... What happens now? Now? Now, we make things right. How? by providing Walias what he was denied. A place to learn and grow. A family to love and protect him. So that one day, when the wounds in his heart and mind have finally healed, he might decide for himself how he'd like to live the rest of his life. But until then, I'll stay by his side, come what may. Then he's a lucky boy. And not only because he'll have the best warrior this side of the belt to teach him the battle axe. Hm. She'll do her best. Shula. The beast that threatened your home is tamed. The empire that threatened your people toppled. Might it not be time to cast off your ancestors' glamour and retake your place in the twins? Perhaps. It's not as if we have the crystals to maintain the wall much longer. But are we truly safe? Is the world truly ready to accept us for who we are and what we believe? If I remember rightly, you and yours still choose to remain hidden, do you not? We do. Well, your people will always be welcome in Haven, regardless. As will yours in the hideaway. We're allies now. If there's anything you need from us, supplies, food, equipment, do not hesitate to ask. It's kind of you to offer. But we'll manage, just as we always have. Besides, I suspect you'll be needing everything at your disposal if you're going to save the world. I fear much of it is past saving. The best we can do is strive to turn what's left into a world where we can all live as equals. A noble endeavor. And there'll be a place in this world for us, will there? For Walias. For everyone. I swear it. Then we shall be waiting until the tides bear you back to shore.
Do you think he'll be all right? Ralias, only time will tell. But I can certainly think of worse places to spend one's childhood. The moats of water are a fine people, and they will take good care of him. Up by the Vare, Ultima spoke to me. He called Leviathan his most profaned fragment, and told me to redeem the sins that had laid him low. Is that so? The sins of Walius' ancestors were grave indeed. To force him to prime at so tender an age. And to freeze him in time. That he might never know what it was to live. Yet I doubt either of those crimes was the source of Ultima's displeasure. It was that the Icon's power had been put to another purpose than the one he intended. To him, Leviathan must have seemed an aberration. Could that be why Ultima made no attempt to lead me to him? The fear that this profane fragment might corrupt his vessel somehow? Perhaps. Or perhaps he simply deemed Leviathan surplus to requirements. Having concluded that his vessel might be made to serve his purposes without the full sum of his power. His purposes? There's no escaping them. Even here. Hidden away in Mesidia, the blessing of the crystals proved nothing but a prison. A prison into which Walius was born. And from which freedom is hard won. If the world doesn't change. If we don't change it. He'll end up suffering the same fate as every dominant who came before him. Then we must change it. That we must. And we shall. It is good to have him back. But how do we know the lad wants?